All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And today I'm joined by Brian McDonald. How are you doing, Brian? Good, John. Uh, thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. Excellent. And Brian is up in the greater Chicago area, correct? Yep. Uh, suburb uh, of Chicago called uh, Neighborville. That's where I'm sitting right now. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, uh, I had a family of mine lived in Libertyville for a while, so not that far away. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, So uh, Brian is part of uh, On Purpose Growth, and he has grown revenue for small and mid-sized businesses for over 17 years. And uh, he uh, he works with companies and helps them to to grow their grow their business. And what we wanted to talk about today is this idea of a win-win situation between salespeople and their customers. So a revenue relationship where both sides come out winning. And that is, uh, and, and let's face it, Brian, a lot of people kind of go into a transaction, uh, yeah. both from a seller and a buyer point of view, sort of um, feeling that the, the result is if they get a little bit more than the other person or they come out feeling dissatisfied because they feel like they they got less than the other person did. So how do you, uh, so what what is your approach to this and how do you set about a framework for where people can have this kind of win-win relationship? Well, you know, I, I, the, the easiest way and the plainest uh, way to explain it is um, creating peer-to-peer relationships in the sales process. Um, and that takes out the transactional part. Um, so a lot of times what we talk about is, you know, how can you, when you enter into um, the sales process, enter into the relationship with uh, with a prospect, um, you know, or a client, create a, um, a peer-to-peer relationship where um, you're um, learning things about them that they may not necessarily um, tell uh, every other service provider that you're competing against, uh, and you're kind of you know being transparent and vulnerable um, to uh, to to start that win-to-win rela- uh, win-win relationship. So you you mentioned uh, being transparent and vulnerable, and these are things that. Some people may find difficult at the beginning or or during a sales process because they never really know how much should I tell the prospect as opposed to, you know, what should I play down and all these other things. So tell me a little bit more about that idea of being transparent and, and vulnerable and why that is a benefit to you. So you're exactly right, right? This is not, you know, telling everybody your 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 deepest darkest secrets from, you know, from the beginning. Um, and I think it's coming. In, I don't think it. Uh, what it is is it's coming into a uh, a sales process, a sales conversation with a level of um, uh, humbleness or humility, uh, and you know, um, basically um, telling a prospect like, hey let's figure out what the actual issue is. Well, let's have a discussion around it. Uh, and, um, genuinely and honestly saying, um, if, if, uh, if I can't fix it, or this is something that we don't solve, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that, mm-hmm. right. Cause, Cause that can be presented in a way that is just, um, lip service. Um, but when it's presented in a way that, um, is very humble, uh, the prospect will, will, um, feel it. They'll understand it. Your body language will, um, will communicate it, and that will uh, help you uh, start entering into that um, relationship and be, you know, vulnerable. Like you, being honest with yourself. Like, hey, I may not be able to help you, so let's let's figure this out. So, if you start off the relationship in that fashion, uh, what difference do you see on behalf of the buyer? Like, how does the buyer tend to react to that? Uh, uh, a lots of different ways. Um, you will see that their, you know, body language changes. They'll they'll get relaxed. Um, they start telling you bits of information that are that are very important. Where um, um, there's a concept we call um, that's called uh, uh, the games prospects and buyers play, uh, mm-hmm. where they stop playing those games uh, and they um, start providing the information that um, that you need to figure out. Um, how to help them. And um, they, um, they'll say things like, look, I am, you know, I've met with a lot of people like you, and I haven't told anybody this yet. Um, Things like that. So how then do you build on that? So it's, it's, it's scraping, 
you know, transparent and humble at the beginning and saying if I can't solve the problem and all of that, then how do you how do you build on that to really uh you know, build the trust and and help to establish that that peer to peer relationship. Uh, so, um, what that does is it is when you when you build that solid relationship up front, um, and um, to you know move through the steps of the sales process. Now it gives you the ability to uh, tell the prospect, like, okay, if you want me to move forward, here's the things that I'm going to need from you. Um, so you move together in that process that you you move out of that. Um, I'm a service provider and you're kind of the master of my domain. Um, it, it gives you um, mutual power and mutual con- control uh, in that sales process. And everybody understands what needs um, to happen, what needs to get provided, what needs to get done to continue to uh, to move along that process, and it's not one sided. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a great point that you raise about the getting them to take action because that's one of the, I think the one of the fundamental mistakes that a lot of salespeople make, and that is you know during the sales process, it's like if I say, oh, uh, Brian and I had a great meeting this morning, and and my my manager says, okay, so what are the next steps? Well, he agreed to meet me again in two weeks. Isn't that great? Aren't I awesome? And but in the in the in in the intervening two weeks, you're not doing anything. I haven't asked you to do anything. Therefore, you're not mm-hmm. actively engaged in the process. You're just taking a meeting with me in two weeks. So that idea of of getting the buyer to take action is is super critical, right? Oh, absolutely. And um, it 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 strengthens strengthens that assessment that you have if this person is a actual prospect or not. Because in that same conversation with the sales manager or whatever, it's we're having a meeting uh, in the next two weeks and they're gonna be providing this, this, yeah. and this, uh, and they agreed to do it within this time frame. That's a, a much stronger assessment uh, in um, the validity, validity of that prospect. Yeah, f- for sure. Because now you have uh, now you've seen that there is at least some investment on their part that they're willing to commit the time and effort to to engage engage in the process. Um, also, then I, I I presume that this approach, when you build this relationship, it also makes it easier for you to uh, get your prospect to trust you enough to maybe bring other people into the equation or to introduce you to other people within the within the buyer's organization or even uh, introduce you higher up. Oh, exactly. They, they actually will go out of their way to do it um, if they've made the assessment that um, your life or their lives are better off with you in it mm-hmm. than without you. Um, so they're going to start pulling in those other resources because you're a key uh, part in uh, achieving whatever outcome that they're uh, that they're looking to achieve. So, what are some of the what are some of the dangers though? Because I guess as you you can do all of this work, but then as you get further into the sales process, maybe you come up to the negotiation phase or something. I mean, that's that's an that's a, a phase where you could unravel this a little bit if you're not careful, right? Um, you know, I have I have a, I have a uh, an interesting perspective, at least mm-hmm. I think I do, uh, when it gets to that stage, is that when you come to the negotiation part, uh, per se, that um, uh, we preach that you never present a, um, a proposal that you already haven't built out between you and the prospect. So mm-hmm. when you're presenting that, that, uh, that proposal, it's already agreed upon and the piece of paper is a formality. So um, if you do go too fast to that um, negotiation part and, and you you move by it, uh, it, um, it it can fizzle off. And uh, what we found, um, and even one of my clients, he's gone from uh, getting a 10 uh, – uh, a 10% uh, proposal acceptance rate all the way up to an 80% uh, proposal mm-hmm. acceptance rate um, is if you, during that negotiation and, and proposal building and whatever you want to call it stage, um, you you have this back and forth of figuring out what they actually want in it, what they would say yes to and what the actual budget uh, would be. That makes it very, very successful. Um, but if you just breeze by 
that part and you just go really, really fast thinking that, you know, you, you've got the rapport, you've got this person's trust. Um, you're missing a very, 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 uh, important part and it, um, and it can unravel very quickly. So the, so the, the idea then is to be collaborative throughout the process and collaborative when you're building the proposal. So there's no surprises. And I guess, uh, the worst thing it, you can do, I mean, cause I always say this, the worst thing is you can do is in sales is not be consistent. So if you've built this, yeah. if you've built this rapport with them and then suddenly you, you, you land something out of the blue on them that is, is, uh, contrary to kind of the way you've acted up to now. It's not a good thing. Contrasts like that are never good things, right? No, not at all. You can uh, you can spend months and months and months of building trust, and within a couple of seconds of a conversation, you can break it. Mm-hmm. Just like you just like you described is that they want to see that pattern uh, to be consistent, and once um, you break that consistency, now you start. Um, uh, 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 implanting or planting the seed of doubt in their mind. And, uh, the longer that, um, seed gets to grow, the harder it is to turn that, uh, you know, to turn that bus around. So how do you handle the, cause in, in most sales processes, I mean, ideally they'd all be nice and smooth from both sides, <laughs> but they, they rarely are. So there's always, there are always some points of contention that come up under a model like this. How do you handle when a point of contention comes up? How do you handle it? So um, I think what you said is is perfect. You know, golden rule is that that the sales process is just a, a general path and it has to be flexible um, mm-hmm. for it to, to, to work best. So when um, when there's variations you know, to that it's one, um, you know, noticing it, uh, and, um, realizing where the breakdown is and going back to where that breakdown is and, and, and fixing it. Um, because you know, what, a um, you know, like, uh, one thing that we see a, a lot is when people just throw proposals around, um, you throw a proposal out and, uh, somebody, you know, makes a general statement agreeing to things if you, um, if you didn't hammer down on them Mm -hmm. and then what you think they would actually, uh, accept now they're backpedaling on and, um, and and they're saying, well, not really that. Um, so, uh, it's, it's identifying that, um, the problem isn't the fact that you, um, you, you gave them the proposal. The breakdown is actually that, um, you didn't actually cover that step well enough. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it is. It is totally. Uh, and I think that's the and I think you've hit on the an important point for people is is to rather than react to a point of contention or when something goes up rather than react immediately. It's better, as you say, to do a little bit of investigation and see what lies behind it and see if uh, if you go back through your process, see if it's it is actually, uh, you know, the fault of you maybe skipping a step or, or not having dealt with something dealt with something earlier on so then if you get through this process and you have a successful sale and you build this relationship tell me a little bit about how this can impact your business going forward not just with that person as a as a repeat customer but as a as a referral as an advocate if you like yeah so um what i've noticed in my own personal business as well as um clients that that learn this and 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 um, and practice it, you know, all the time is that they drive deeper relationships with their clients. Um, and they get more referrals out of them. They, um, they get more projects. If it's a large organization, they tend to get, um, larger projects, uh, and the clients, um, keep them, uh, closer to the vest and, um, tell them information prior to, you know, telling other people or whatnot. Uh, and, they become easier clients to work with um, mm. because you have that relationship uh, on that specific level, right? It's mm. not just a, uh, a vendor relationship. It's, hey, um, you know, Brian, you actually really understand where I'm trying to go and how to get there. So um, I'm keeping you closer to the best. Uh, thus, I'm listening to you more uh, and collaborating with you more. So uh, it not only you know, get you those referrals and, and more clients, internal or external, but it also creates um, 
what I would say a, a better lifestyle um, type of business working with people like that. Yeah, and for sure. And and then the other part of it too, I guess, is that when you have the inevitable, there's always inevitable a hiccup in a in a in a. Uh, in the relationship at some stage or something goes wrong with your product or something's a misunderstanding, they tend to be a lot more forgiving and a lot more yeah. willing to listen to, you know, the explanation, right? Yeah. You, you work on problems together. Mm -hmm. You don't actually become the problem for them. Yeah. And I think that's the, and I think that's a really uh, key point for everyone to take away here because we've all, we've all seen this uh, ourselves over, over, you know, the years is that, when you have a when you have a vendor relationship, any problem that comes up, you just blame the vendor, right? You even <laughs> if it's your own fault, uh, you just blame the vendor because and and people tend to they always blame. Oh, it's the, it's their fault, and it's much easier to deflect. However, if you have built a relationship and they're more than a vendor, but you really uh, you know you really trust them and they've delivered for you in the past, then you tend to share share the issue and solve mm -hmm. it together as opposed to just outsource the blame right absolutely i mean well said i, I don't think i can say it any better than that it's uh, it's it's the best outcome uh of the of the process because you you'll you'll see how you have customers for uh for life or um the lifetime we'll call it value of a customer where they'll stick around they'll stick around for a lot longer Excellent. All right, Brian, we're bumping up against the end of our time. So before we go, I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization, how they can find out more. Yeah, uh, thanks, John. I, I appreciate you having me on. Um, so uh, I've been in business development or new revenue growth for my uh, whole professional career. So um, my coaching and consulting firm on purpose growth works with uh, uh, clients who have ambitious uh single or multi-year goals, uh, and we help them fulfill that ambition. So you can find more about us uh, by going to our website, onpurposegrowth.com, or you can find uh, more about me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm at uh, linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash McDonald Brian. Excellent. And you also have the Greater Naperville Network, is that right? Uh, a networking yeah, machine? That's uh, that's a little dormant right now. That's a... Uh, um, you know, we've been, um, eh, that's a really old, uh, organization, meaning 2009, mm -hmm. uh, organization I started, but you know, we do do a, a lot of networking and, uh, we're, we're currently active, um, in working to uh, have that group uh, become more active. So, uh, cool. All right. So again, my name is John Golden, sales pop online, sales magazine, pipeliner, CRM, Brian McDonald in Chicago. Thank you very much. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.